Sometime that don't make it weird. <laughs> but God, she was everything. Well, if you think she was everything, wait till you see when I show you everything. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. All right. I, I am, I'm excited about, of course, uh, Stay the Path. That's the title of today's message. Stay the path. Stay the path. And you'll figure this out and what it means in just a little while. But you know what? When we go off path, the things of God just seem like impossible to us. And it's, it's the enemy that tries to get us to go off path to mess our lives up when we're on path. So it reminds me of this story. There's this, uh, there's this first grade teacher, and she She's teaching her class about whales, and she says to the kids, the first grade kids, she goes, does anybody in, in here know anything about whales? Well, this little girl raises her hand, and she says, yes, my Sunday school teacher says that Jonah was eaten by a whale. And she said, oh, honey, that's just a silly Sunday school story. I don't believe in that, and I don't believe in the Bible either. And the little first grader put her head down like this, and she goes, oh, well, I guess when I get to heaven, I'll just have to ask Jonah if he was really swallowed by a whale. Irritated, the first grade teacher said, well, maybe Jonah will be in hell. And the little girl says, then you can ask him. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. But you know what? Sometimes the, the littlest things can throw us off path. And as we get older, we look past the little things, but the enemy still plants seeds in our mind to get us to go off path. Like, for instance, this is a true story. This is just how my brain works. When I go to Starbucks, which is not very often as much as the ladies do, but when I go to Starbucks, they, they, sometimes if the line is long, the lady will look past and she will say, um, is there something I can get started for you? And in my mind, I'm thinking, the way you just asked me makes me believe you're really not going to finish it. Because she's just saying, can I get something started for you? But as you get to realize, no, wait a minute, she'll finish what she said she was going to start. And that's a Starbucks barista. How much more is God going to do that? But today, we're going to take this whole concept and we're going to make it so understandable and so clear that the enemy can't put his wedge between you and the perfect will of God. Amen? Amen. Stay the path. So here we go. Even though we may not understand it, we have to stay the path. I want to say this to you. What about this? Let's talk about this power of this path for just a minute here. For instance, if you're happy today, what will tomorrow be like? Think about this because I'm going to talk to everybody in the way you feel. If you're happy today, what's tomorrow going to be like? A lot of people don't enjoy the happiness and the joy of today because they pre-assume that tomorrow's not going to go well, so why even get excited for the rest of the day because we're just going to have to be let down tomorrow? That's how, that's how we think. That's how many people think because the enemy gets in you. But watch this. What about this? If you're miserable today, what's tomorrow going to be like? Imagine what tomorrow's going to be like. People can't imagine what tomorrow's going to be like because if it's miserable today, that's their hope for tomorrow. You see, what they're seeing right now is what they believe and perceive is going to take place tomorrow. This is, what I, this is what we have to kind of get a hold of because this is how the enemy plays in our minds. If we just lost the perfect job, imagine what is next. We lost the perfect job. What is next? We can't imagine what is next because that was our dream job. Now it's done. What about if we just got dumped by our perfect Mr. or Mrs. Wright? Then what's going to happen next? We can't imagine what's going to happen next because that was our dream person. That's the one we gave our heart to. That's the one we let all of our emotions run in on, and now we are lost. This is how the enemy attacks you. He had, see, this, let me tell you something. A lot of people out there, this is the, this is the one thing that can really start messing people up is when friendships or, you know, relationships that are moving towards engagement or marriage, when they go south, everybody collapses because that's something that attacks your emotion. And if you're a, a parent or a, you have children or you're just trying to survive in life and you lose a job and you look at the responsibilities, then your life begins to collapse. You see, what we have to realize is you won't understand any of this unless you answer the question properly. However, are you answering the correct question? This is what we have to ask ourselves, and that is this. Many answer the question, what is your source? So you begin, to, you begin to try and find your source when you should be asking, and in fact, who is my source? Amen? 
what is my source is completely different than who is my source. Because what is my source means you plan on ta- taking action, and who is my source says the action has already been taken. Did anybody get a hold of that? Let me show you what I'm talking about. John 15, chapter 11 says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. If the Lord's joy is in you, first of all, you got to be holding on to him. But if his joy is in you and it's complete, then you need not worry about the questions that you keep asking yourself and not jump source ship. So you don't want to go from your source to God's source and then back to your source again just because God's not moving fast enough. Amen? Because that's where everything goes south. And people used to go, my joy has been stolen from me. My happiness has been stolen from me. But watch this. If you are, if you're trying to create the perfect job, if you're trying to create the perfect relationship, if you're looking for the perfect church, if you're looking for the perfect anything, it's not going to happen because it does not happen by your perfection. It doesn't happen when you are the source. It is God that takes this and he makes this all happen. We don't understand that because we try to say, listen, man, it's just not happening. We got to jump in here because you are just suffering. And you know what? Don't you feel bad about that? When you lose that job and you lost, and that, that relationship went south, don't, don't be so disappointed in yourself that I have failed because I can't keep my trust in God. You're a human being, and human beings don't always sit there and do everything perfect. You have to realize God is your source. You need to be around people that are going to help you not jump ship. Amen? Because if you jump ship to your own source, you lose the whole thing. First of all, let me show you with this. God has already set up perfection. Oh, I love this. Revelation chapter 22. I'm going to jump to verse 13. I was going to add 12, but I'm just going to have 13. And Revelation 22, 13, if you're a note taker, write this down. He says this, I am. Oh, I love this. Are you ready for this? This is the answer today. He says, I am the alpha and the omega. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. This is who he is. What does that mean? Well, Jeremiah 1.5 says this, before I formed you in the womb, I already knew who you were. He says, before you were born, I set you apart, he said, because I'm the alpha and the omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I knew you before you were. I had plans for you before you were. Where's that at? I mean, you've heard me say it, and I'm going to keep saying it until we get it. Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope, and plans to give you a future. The Jewish people understand this as one word, akrit. And the word akrit is something I'm going to talk about today because that's going to change your whole perception of life. It's going to change who you are and how the enemy tries to work his way in and destroy you. Well, what are you talking about? God went all the way to the end to give you a beginning. I don't even know what that means. Let me explain akrit. That's what this road is for right here. You see, God is infinite. He has no time. There's no time in heaven. There was no beginning and there's no end. But there is a beginning to mankind and there's an end to mankind. So what God did is he started at the very beginning of mankind. He transcended all the way to the end of mankind, wrote everything perfect for those who stay on the path, and then went all the way back and wrote you in. That's akrit. That's what it means. That's the Hebrew word that literally ties God together and who they are. So I take this path right here. Here's the path that we're on right here. And this is what happened. You see, God started in this entire path. There's the beginning of mankind, and here's the end of mankind. So somewhere in here is you. Your life starts at different times. But here is your beginning, and here is your end. And God has already been where you have not been yet. He has already transcended to the end of your life before you even began. He already had a purpose for you before you were born. I knew you before you were in your mother's womb, he said. I had a plan for you before you were a twinkle in their eye. I knew who you were because I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. I have transcended from the beginning to the end, and then I came back and I wrote you in. This is who he is. This is God that we serve. But the enemy's job is to get you to jump ship. And if you can jump ship, then you go outside the path. And when you go outside the path, let me show you what I'm talking about. Pastor Shannon, if you wouldn't mind coming up here for just a second. This is your, this is your ocarine right here, Pastor Shannon. And if you step outside the path, this is now you have jumped ship and no, God is no longer your source, but you are your source. And now you're out here, and this is how God works. This is where the devil wants you, because he can beat the crud out of you over here. He can just, here, Jack, come over here and beat the crud out of him, will you please? Come on up, Jack. Jack, good luck. <laughs> just, 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 
yeah, he beat, the devil beats the cross. And here's God in his perfect path. Just keep beating him. He's on the perfect path right here. This is the Akrit line. This is the Akrit path right here. And God has his hand out like this to you, but he won't interfere with your, with your free will. So while you're getting the crud beat out of you, all he wants to do is get you back in the path of the Akrit. So he puts his hand, and as soon as you grab him, the enemy has to stop, and he pulls you back into that perfect will that he once started from you before you were ever born. So you say, well, Joe, I know a lot of people that, are, that have a great life. They don't have to worry about this path. Well, let's go out here. Now, now get on your knee. Get on your knee. You see, now you get on your knee because you're the devil, and put your arm around him. Sometimes the devil keeps you happy in life. Oh, you missed it. Sometimes the de- don't make it weird. Sometimes the devil makes you happy in life because he wants to keep you from getting on God's path. So he has created a fictitious path that makes you think everything's going to be okay. Because once you get on here, you not only end up where he needs you to be, perfect joy, perfect peace, perfect will, but you end up destroying the enemy's will. And his plan is not to just destroy him, but it's to have him take other people down with him. Does that make sense? And then when the enemy pulls the rug out from underneath him, and then he leaves him laying stranded like this, now here's God still with his hand out. He's put his hand out to get you back on the path which he started. Over here, hands out. Here we go. (laughs) Thank you. And he comes back. Now, see, the devil, the enemy, cannot step on this path. This is the perfection of God. He has no place here. He can only get you when you step off the path. Does that make sense? Stay within the Akrit, and the enemy can't get a hold of you. The perfect will of God from the beginning to the end, it cannot be changed. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Thank you, gentlemen. You did a wonderful job. Let's talk, let's talk about this now. Let's talk about this. Here is your life right here. Here's where you are today, every one of you, wherever you are, your spam, but you're right here. Let's just say, how is your today going? If your today is going well, and this is God's p- path for you. And your tomorrow in his Akrit means I have a plan for you, not to harm you, but hope in a future. If your today is going well, what's going to happen to your tomorrow? You see, you're assuming, well, maybe, no, no, no. His plan is perfect. It's not to harm you. And just because there's a dip in your joy or your happiness doesn't mean that you're falling the wrong way. You are going this way on the Akrit line. His plan for you right here is perfect. And if it's not good today because there's a dip, what happens if your plan is miserable? What's tomorrow going to be like? Tomorrow is always the perfect will of God. Amen? So you say, well, I don't understand why this has had to happen to me. Well, you don't have to understand, but it's part of the Akri. Sometimes it's not because of God. It's because you're standing out there trying to understand the Akri line. Amen? So what about this? I lost that perfect job. I had the best job, you say to yourself. I had, I had no stress, no worry, no fear. I had plenty of money, and I just lost the perfect job due to cutbacks due to cutbacks. Now you sit there and you are miserable. Why are you miserable? Why are you worried about that? You are on the path of the Akrit. This is your job loss right here. Imagine what he's got for you tomorrow. But you don't see tomorrow because you wallop in today, jump ship, make you the source instead of God, and you step outside the Akrit line. Does that make sense to anybody? So here's the one that hits everybody. What about that perfect spouse? What about that perfect girlfriend, that perfect boyfriend? What about that perfect relationship? What about that perfect friend? What about the perfect person that you have put your life into, the one that you've opened your heart to and you've poured out to them? I'm talking to somebody right now on this broadcast that's watching. You pay attention and listen to this. What about that person right there? When that person dumps you, when that person denies you, when that person gossips about you, lets you down, your life crumbles Because that was, in your eyes, the most perfect person. That was the one you could pour your heart out to. You understand what I'm saying? Where is that? What happens to your life? You jump ship. Do you know how many people give up on God because of situations out of relationships that they have given their heart to another person? And that person has gone south. And not because you went south. Because you have to understand something. Sometimes, many of you enter into a relationship with the opposite sex because you, but you can't hold on to those relationships because you are trying to make the other person perfect. You can't do it. 
Only God is perfect. Stay both on the Akrit line and watch what happens to your life. You can, you're going to go from boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend to boyfriend, girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend to girlfriend, because you're trying to make them what you consider perfect. God says, no, no, no. I am perfect. Neither one of you are perfect. Stay on the Akrit line and watch what happens. But if you lose that love of your life, come on, some of you knows what I'm talking about. Somebody say amen right now. You lose that love of your life, that one that just melted your heart, and you go, what good is life? If God says, I know the plan I have for you, hope in a future, and you are walking the path of Akri, and you are right here, if you, if you love that person that much, and God took them from you for whatever reason, what does he have next? Do you understand? He doesn't get worse. He gets better. The Bible says he goes from glory to 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 glory. He doesn't just crash you down like that. But you look at that, and as soon as that happens, you jump ship. Well, Joe, I'm on the Akrit line, but it's, nothing's making sense to me. I'm not happy. It, it's not, I, it, I'm not gaining what I'm supposed to gain from this path. That's because you look like this. You cannot have one foot on God's path and the other foot on your path. Because if you have one foot on your path, you may as well just put them both there. Because God doesn't bless you until you're completely sold out to his path. He says, I got a plan for you in heaven. That plan is for salvation, eternal salvation. But you can't be hot or cold. I'm sorry, you got to be hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. I'll spit you out of my mouth. I need all of you. I'm not asking you to do anything for your eternal blessing. All I'm asking is you to believe. But when you believe, don't believe with one foot in the world. I'll believe as long as God blesses me, but I won't believe and I have questions if he's not blessing me. You are either on the path of Akrit or you are off the path. You're not in between because in between doesn't get you the blessings. And this is where so many people considerably fall apart because I don't know what else to do, God. I don't know what to do. He says it in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. He said, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Well, how am I supposed to bless you if you're just talking about it? You have got to understand. I want you to do me a favor right now. I want you to take any thought that is in your mind that is not pleasing to you. I don't care what it is. Something that's not going right in your life. And you don't know what to This is where you are today. But this is your tomorrow. If you can stay on path, the tomorrow will get you where he needs you to be. And sometimes it's not going right for you because you are focused. Now watch me. Watch all my whole body here. You're focused on this right here. This is God. I'm, I'm holding on to God. I'm holding on. But look. Look at my foot. See it? See it? Look at God. I got you. I don't know why things aren't working for me. Man, everything. I don't understand this. I did everything the pastor said. I did everything the word of God says. Look over here. Do you see this? You've got a toe on your own path. He's not happy with that. You're either all for God or you're not for him at all to get the blessing. Somebody say amen. amen. Well, I don't know. It's in the word of God. Listen to this. Watch this. First of all, before I do that, I want, um, it's like this. The world can get you, teachers, professors, people that love you. All they can do is start planting seeds in your head. Like I told that joke about the girl with the whale. The teacher started planting a seed in that little girl's head. Well, I don't believe in the Bible, but the little girl was too young. She believed what her mom told her, what her Sunday school teacher told her, and says, well, then, you know, then if, the, if Jonah is in hell, then, then you talk to him. Because I believe that the word of God is the word of God. I want to ask this question again. I'm, I've asked it twice already. I'm going to ask it again. That perfect love in your life, that perfect love that dumped you, just dumped you for whatever reason. You're a good person. You're on this path. But that perfect love dumped you. Why do you think that perfect love dumped you? Because it was your perfect love, not his. Amen? What you can't see up there, he can see. Well, why did he allow me to get married? Because it was your decision. You made the decision to get married. You made the decision to date that person. You made the decision to open up a broken heart. Not God, you. Don't blame it on God. You made that decision when you were out here. But it all looked good. It looked good for the moment. But if you're not on the path... Then the decision, you're blind to those decisions. But if, if it's meant and it's by God, the job will be the one he gives you. The relationship will be the one he gives you. The children will be the one he gives you. Everything will be the one he gives you. But if you step like this, now it's yours because you just became the source of his perfect will. He is not man that he should compete with you. Amen. He says this in, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such great clouds of witnesses, let us, let us throw off everything. Come on, home, somebody say amen here. Come on. 
Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. He said, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Let us run the race on the path that is marked out for us, the Akrit line. This is something you don't understand because you're not Jewish. You haven't heard these words spoken over and over since you were a child. He has already transcended from the beginning of your life to the end of your life. Then he created you with perfection along the path. Then he sent his, own, he sent his only son to die for you so that the enemy cannot stop anything that God has planned for you. He cannot stop your salvation. He cannot stop your joy. He cannot not stop your peace because God has already transcended it and made it perfect. All he says to do is hold on. John 15, I said it a couple weeks ago. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you let go of the vine, you end up over here. If you hold it on to the vine, he's going to always pull you back on the path. Amen? 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 Come on, somebody say amen in here. I like that. So when you don't feel it, when you don't feel like things are going right for you, look at your foot. Which is it maybe a little baby toe, maybe that little tiny baby toe. Everybody's got that little tiny baby toe on that foot. Why did God put that baby toe on your foot? So you can run it into things. That's why. Because I have. It hurts like nobody's business. So look at that little baby toe. And then re read what it says in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 8 through 10. He says, remember this. Keep it in mind. Take heart, you rebels. What is it? God's calling you a rebel? He's calling you a rebel when you try to handle it yourself. Somebody say Amen. He says, he calls you this rebel because this is what he says. He says, remember the former things and those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning. That's what we're talking about. This is where the word comes from, these scriptures right here. From ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. I am God. I'm not going to change because you're have, having a hissy fit. Amen? Stay the path. You can't blame it. Christianity, listen, I made a vow to God last week. I'm going to keep this vow. And that vow I made was to preach the truth of this word. And to preach it so you succeed, not fail. Amen? Because if you, it may hurt. God says, get, get over it and quit crying because tomorrow I got this for you. And if you keep crying, you're not going to see this right here. You, oh, I loved her, God. She's the most beautiful girl in the whole world. She loved me so much. If she loved you so much, why'd she leave? All right. But God, she was everything. Well, if you think she was everything, wait do you see when I show you everything. Mm. Do you get a hold of that? But that job, how am I going to help my family? That was a perfect job. It was easy. I knew it well. That was the job right here. I went through this part right here. But wait till you see what I got for you tomorrow. Stay the path. But God, if you don't help me soon, I'm going to just have to go here. Hmm. I am God. Don't, don't forget that, he says. And he says, there is no other. So you can want to be, oh, did you, oh, did you get all that? Did you get all that? I am God, and there is no other. That other means you. I am God, therefore don't try to become him. Amen? Amen? So imagine this. If today is good, what's tomorrow going to be like? Think about that. If today is not good, there's hope for tomorrow. God's perfect will is not to harm you, but it's to give you hope and a future. If you want to be blessed, stay the path. Understand Akrit and let God fulfill his perfect and his pleasing will and your entire Life will transform just like that right before your eyes. No baby toe outside the path. Amen. Stand with me to your feet. That's all I got today. We don't want you to leave today without giving you an opportunity to follow Jesus. The Bible says the only way to the Father is through the Son. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We invite you to take a moment and ask God to forgive you to help you follow him on this journey. If you've made this decision today, make sure that you get into a church that teaches the Word of God. And remember to read the instruction manual. That's the Bible. If you're in the area, come visit us at any time. Check out times and location at orlandofamilychurch.com or at 407-462-1358. Hope to see you there.